Asia and I work at the Virginia Division of Consolidated Laboratory Services, DCLS, or the State Public Health Lab. And I'm Taylor. I work at DCLS too. We're here today to try and make stool collection a little bit easier. We'll walk you through the contents of the kit, how to collect the specimen, and how to ensure that it gets to the lab safely so that we can test it. Don't worry, we'll keep it clean and simple. Okay, here's our stool collection kit with all the supplies you'll need to collect a stool specimen. Let's see what we have in here. Included in the stool collection kit, you should find instructions for how to collect the stool specimen, a DCLS submission form, an empty cup, a tube of red liquid, two labels, one for the cup and one for the tube of red liquid, three biohazard bags containing absorbent paper, a disposable scoop, and a paper stool collection device to put on the toilet to help with collection. Be sure to collect your specimens as soon as possible after symptoms begin and follow these instructions. Okay, step one on the patient instructions for stool collection says to fill out the following sections of the DCLS submission form, which says DCLS Clinical Microbiology Virology Request Form at the top. Using a pen or marker, which we'd like to be blue or black if possible, and making sure to write neatly, fill out the patient information section, including the patient's name, the patient's date of birth, the patient's age, the patient's gender, the patient's address, and the patient's race or ethnicity. Remember that if this information is missing or misspelled, or we can't read your handwriting, your sample testing will be delayed while we sort all of that out. And in the patient medical history box, clearly indicate the signs and symptoms that the patient has experienced and the date when the symptoms began. Now don't forget to flip the submission form over and at the very top of the form, make sure to write the patient's name again and their date of birth. All right, now that we have the form completed, let's go ahead and fill out the labels that will go on the cup and the tube with the red liquid. Using a ballpoint pen or permanent marker, be sure to write neatly again and write the patient's name, date of birth, and date of collection on both sticker labels. And place one sticker on the cup, and the other on the tube of red liquid. Okay, so now we're ready to get on with collecting the stool sample. Be sure to wash your hands before and after collecting the stool sample and urinate prior to performing stool collection. This stool collection device is going to be attached to the toilet to help collect your stool sample. Do not urinate into the collection device. One side has instructions and the other side is blank. Place the collection device with the writing side up on a flat surface and fold flaps up along the scored line. Remove the backing from the adhesive tape flaps. These will be used to secure the collection device to the toilet seat. Make sure to follow the arrow instructions on the collection device. These arrows point to the back of the toilet and these to the front. Go ahead and attach the tape flaps to the toilet seat. Gently push down in the center of the collection device to form a bowl to collect the stool. Be careful not to push too hard or you will tear the paper and the bowl won't be very useful. Make sure that it fits down inside of the toilet seat but is not touching the water in the toilet bowl. And now, you're ready to go. After the bowel movement, you'll want to use this scoop to scoop the stool from the collection bites into the empty cup first and also into the tube with red liquid. Make sure not to overfill the empty cup, no more than about a half full. And make sure to add enough stool to the tube with red liquid to bring the liquid up to the fill line. Go ahead and tightly secure the lid on each container once you've added the stool. Once you are done scooping the stool into the vial, lift the paper dish at the four attachment points and let it fall into the toilet. 
Then go ahead and remove the cardboard portion and throw it away in the garbage. Flush the toilet when you are done and don't forget to wash your hands too. Alright, now that we have completed the collection, let's get it packaged up to ship over to the lab for testing. You'll want to put each stool container in its own biohazard bag, and you'll want to be sure the bag contains absorbent material in case of a leak. Speaking of leaks, before you place the container in the bag, please be sure that the lid is on tight and straight, and the sticker with the patient's name and information is stuck to the side of each container. Once the container is in the bag, seal the bag by removing the adhesive strip and press along the line. Both bags now need to be inserted into the third bag. Now is a good time to wash your hands again. Make sure to place the DCLS submission form into the outer pocket on the biohazard bag and fold the flap to secure. It is important not to put the form inside the bag with the sample in order to keep the form clean and prevent it from being ruined if the stool container leaks. The bag containing the samples must be refrigerated until it is ready to be picked up by the health department. Some people like to put the whole kit in a paper lunch sack before placing it in the fridge. That's up to you and not required. For babies, the procedure is a little different. Use the same cup and tube of red liquid, but scoop the stool from a diaper instead of a toilet. Contact your local health department or the provider that gave you this kit to arrange for a pickup or delivery if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll find this video helpful. And we hope you feel better soon.